Welcome to Killick & Co's podcast for the 17th of March. Well, last week um, the stock market endured one of its weakest um, periods for some time. Uh, the FTSE 100 was down by around 3%, taking the year-to-date performance for the FTSE 100 to just over 3%. And in the US, the S&P, which has proved to be more resilient, has given up all of this year's gains and now trades flat. Um, really, the central reason for that, uh, well, two, two parts. That First of all, um, tensions continuing to to develop in the Crimea region um, and uh, sitting on the doorstep of Europe, um, the impact potentially politically and also uh, economically on that particular region uh, brings some uncertainty. And also, as we alerted you to last week in uh, the podcast, we were speaking about the weakness in the copper market and uh, ramifications for Chinese growth. Um, some data points recently, um, in particular the, uh, the sort of 18% decline in exports in China year on year, um, leading some to conclude that things are really sort of not well in the China region at the moment and net result of that is um, some panic about global growth. So all of those things coming together. Here in the UK we also had um, some sector issues. Um, again last week we did look at the Morrison's um, uh, statement or forward guidance for Morrison's statement. Uh, the Sunday Times had run um, what proved to be a very um, informative piece um, at that weekend um, suggesting they were going to be reinvesting about £500 million into price cuts and when the news came um, well it seemed to be worse than expected and the net result of that is um, that uh, the whole sector was hit very hard and continues to weaken a little bit this morning with Tesco shares down below three pounds a share and really the market looking for some return comments from both Sainsbury when it reports its results tomorrow and indeed Tesco how are they going to respond to the move that Morrison's have made so certainly undermining um, a good deal of um, value in those um, particular stocks so let's take a look at the, this week and what we can expect really sort of two or three really quite interesting uh, features this week of course in the UK we'll have the budget um, and uh, George Osborne standing up this is uh, an important budget it sets the tone um, pre the election for uh, May 2015 um, already we have heard that he is going to extend the help to buy plan um, to 2020 that key removes a key risk for the early closure of that um, plan and um, that was possibly holding the house building sector back um, the house builders have responded very positively this morning with growth of around 6% in some of the leaders like Persimmon for example um, but also we'll be hearing from him as to revised growth expectations expectations and other, other policy initiatives that he is looking to make. But a few leaks starting to come through. And in the US, uh, well, it's Janet Yellen's first meeting chairing the FOMC rates decision. Um, the expectation firmly, particularly in light of the recent strong employment data, is that they'll continue the tapering of $10 billion per month, that decision due up on Wednesday of this week. Um, in terms of uh, other, other points, um, we highlight in the sort of darker colours some stocks that we are looking at. I mentioned very much about the house builders. Barclay Group is our live recommendation in the sector and they have their trading update that is due tomorrow. Those shares are um, up around 3% on Monday morning going into that, uh, in, into that statement uh, due tomorrow. Um, United Utilities on Thursday and also Nike on Thursday. Um, again, interested in that uh, particular stock in light of our healthier living uh, theme that was issued last week. So let's just take a look at really some of those sort of important charts for last week. And the FTSE 100, this is a year-to-date chart and it shows that all we really have seen at the moment is quite high levels of volatility. Um, this initial decline um, related to initially to Ukraine, um, but it was felt um, the recovery at the time was felt that that would be a situation that's passed over. But as, as it hasn't passed over, the market's slightly misjudging that one. And with the added additional comments that I mentioned about China, you can see that the FTSE 100 now trading are down about 3.23% on the year to date. The S&P, as mentioned, has proved to be more resilient. This is a one-year performance. I'm really just identifying here that despite all of the uncertainty that's been created last week, the S&P still remains uh, very resiliently towards the top end of its trading range at the moment. So a very encouraging performance that we have seen uh, from them. Copper was the chart of the week last week and I've brought it up again um, just to sort of highlight that uh, we saw continued weakness after the publication of that podcast. Um, 
and it is seen as a leading beacon at the moment for looking through to potentially the growth rates in China at the moment um, and uh, whether or not this is giving us a, a sort of lead indicator that we should be taking a more note of at the moment. Um, just in terms of um, uh, Russia um, has um, had a very ominous start to 2014 with its own stock market now trading around 15% down year to date. So uh, the economic uh, sanctions um, are definitely impacting on Russian stock markets at the moment. Just really returning to the house building theme, I mentioned Barclay Homes, um, which is uh, around 42% up year in terms of the course of the last 12 months. Um, trading update due tomorrow, so um, keep a an eye on that one and uh, we'll have some comments out first thing tomorrow morning. We've also initiated a buy on a mid-cap play, Breeden. Breeden Aggregates, again, this has proved to be a resilient performer over the course of the last year, but we see further to go with this um, with this particular stock, sitting very much at the quarry aggregates end of the market. Um, one interesting fact that uh, I thought was worth bringing, bringing to mind is that uh, in the UK, our aggregate spend per capita apparently is uh, amongst the lowest in Europe and around half that in Germany and well below that in France. And that has been a situation that has persisted not just for last year but um, for many decades, uh, a level of underinvestment in the UK in infrastructure. That is all about to change and that we can see that uh, the initiatives that are really being felt right across the cross-party um, uh, um, uh, political situation for more infrastructure spend at the moment to get jobs moving, to get cash back into the economy means that uh, there is a definite lift up, um, not just with house building but wider infrastructure spend at the moment. And uh, Quarry Groups, this is the largest UK independent company out of the likes of uh, Lafarge and Holkim um, and uh, this is a company we've initiated a buy on under that particular theme. So again, as always, speak to your broker if you'd like to find out more about Breeden Aggregates.